In this tutorial, we're going to create a hairbrush using SolidWorks XShape, a cloud-based subdivision tool for freeform 3D modeling. The following topics will be included in this workflow. You can find what you need to get started and design along with us using the link in the description below. Opening the hairbrush start file, we have three ordered geometrical sets, known as OGSs. The first contains reference images of our hairbrush, including a top and side view. The second OGS contains the bristles, which have already been designed for us. And the last OGS, named Handle, is empty, because we have yet to design it. We'll start off creating the hairbrush by hiding the bristles OGS and activating the Handle OGS. In the Design Manager, click the bristles OGS once to access the Hide command from the Context toolbar. Then double-click the Handle OGS to activate it. With the correct OGS highlighted, we can add a primitive shape from the Subdivision tab of the Action Bar. We'll begin with a box. Place it at the origin over the X. We can edit how many vertices, edges, and faces the shape begins with by changing the number of segments. Increase the number of Y segments to 6, and decrease the number of Z segments to 2. In the dialog box, we can also scale the shape to specific dimensions with the Scale by Bounding Box option. Let's scale non-uniform and set the X value to 50 mm, the Y value to 180 mm, and the Z value to 10 mm. Click the green check mark to continue and enter the subdivision environment. We'll start by editing the top view, so let's click the side image and select Hide from the context toolbar. Click the top plane of the orientation triad in the top right to view normal to the top plane. Let's turn on transparency from the top toolbar so we can see the reference image as we sculpt. Click and drag the slider to 50 and click the icon again to remove the slider. Based on the reference image, our hairbrush should be a bit longer so let's extend the bottom faces. Begin by box selecting the end of the brush. Notice how only vertices are added to our selection. To add only faces to our selection, change the selection filter from the top toolbar to Faces. Click the pin to the left of the option to retain the filter. Box selecting from right to left adds any face the box touches whereas left to right adds only faces completely within the box. In this case, we want the last row of faces selected. Add more material to these faces with the Extrude command from the Context toolbar. We can also use the Extrude command to remove material and quickly create a hole. Select the face near the hairbrush hole in the image reference. Holding the Control key, select the opposing face on the underside of the model. This time, selecting Extrude from the Context Toolbar will create a void through the two faces. Change back to the top view using the triad. To size the hole correctly, we want to select its entire face loop. Double-clicking a face will add an entire face loop to our selection. Be sure to double-click in the direction of the desired loop. Double-clicking towards the top of the brush will add the center face loop to our selection. But double-clicking towards the adjacent face of the hole will select the face loop going around it. Selecting any face, edge, or vertex activates the robot manipulator. We can use the robot to translate, rotate, or scale our selection. Click and drag the horizontal arrow to the right by 2 millimeters. Hovering over the ruler allows us to snap to precise increments. Clicking and dragging the point at the end of the arrow allows us to scale in that direction. Repeat this step to scale in the perpendicular direction to match the image reference as close as possible. Let's turn on symmetry from the action bar so we can model both sides of the handle at once. We can select the YZ plane either from the graphics area or the Design Manager. 
the green edge loop signifies the plane of symmetry. Change the selection filter back to any entity and click the pin to retain the filter. Box select these vertices and click and drag them down by 15 millimeters. Next, we'll make another box selection. We can reorient the robot by right-clicking the center of it. By default, the robot is oriented based on our selection, but we want to orient it to XYZ so we can translate the vertices in the X direction by 7 millimeters. Let's scale the middle edge loops down to match the image reference. We can double-click to select this edge loop and scale it down. Beware, scaling too drastically will result in an error message. Let's repeat this process on the adjacent edge. To make the handle transition sharper, select the adjacent edge loop and translate to the right by 20 millimeters. Return to the two previous edge loops and scale them to match the image reference. Next, we'll sculpt the top of our hairbrush handle. Let's box select the top corner of vertices and translate them to the right by 10 millimeters and down by 3 millimeters. Now let's box select these vertices and click the horizontal arrow on the robot. If we click the zero on the ruler, we can type in a precise value. Let's set this to 8 millimeters and click the check to continue. The top view is now complete. Let's click the top reference image to hide it and turn off transparency in the top toolbar. Now we'll edit the handle to meet the bristles, so let's pan around to the underside of the brush. Let's set our selection filter back to faces and pin that option. We'll also turn on select only visible elements so we only affect the bottom faces. Starting from the right, make a box selection like shown. Recall that box selecting from right to left selects any face that the box touches. With these bottom 12 faces selected, we can choose Extrude from the context toolbar. Box select these faces again, and this time select Crease Edges from the context toolbar. Let's show the Bristles OGS from the Design Manager. The handle extends through the bristles instead of up to them, so let's select this face and choose Tangent Propagation to select the flat faces of the handle. We'll change back to a side view and translate them up by 4 millimeters, leaving a gap. Zoom and pan to the bristles, and while holding the control key, select one of the top faces. In the context toolbar, let's choose Align to Geometry. Next, let's change the selection filter back to any entity and pin this option. Pan around to the front of the brush and hold the control key while selecting two of the vertices on the bottom corner. Let's drag them inwards by 5 millimeters to better match the contour of the bristles. Now let's begin by sculpting from the side view and show the side image reference again from the Design Manager. To view the image while sculpting, turn the transparency slider back to 50 from the top toolbar. Click the icon again to remove the slider. Also from the top toolbar, turn off Select Only Visible Elements. Let's box select the three vertices on the top corner of the handle and translate them towards the bottom of the brush by 15 millimeters. Next, let's double-click one of the edges in the middle to select the entire edge loop and scale down. Box select the two bottom edge loops at the end of the handle and scale them up to match the thickness of the image reference. To round off the bottom of the handle, let's box select the middle two bottom vertices and translate them out 3 millimeters. Now we'll add some curvature to the handle. 
Start by box selecting the three bottom loops of vertices and translating them down by 5 mm. We can click and drag the arc in between the arrows to rotate them down 10 degrees. Note you can hover over the ruler to snap to a precise increment. The sculpting process is complete, so we can exit the subdivision environment. Notice that the subdivision surface is automatically knitted into a closed, watertight, solid body. Subdivision surfaces can also be knitted by accessing the command from the context toolbar. To clean up the graphics area, let's use the V key shortcut. From this menu, we can hide and show several types of entities, but for now we'll just hide the planes. Hitting the V key again hides the menu. We can also click on the reference image in the graphics area and choose hide from the context toolbar. Our hairbrush model is now complete. Feel free to continue modeling and make this design your own. And if you'd like to see more tutorials, check out the SolidWorks YouTube channel.